morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. It's it's early. I've shut the curtains just to keep all the light. Yeah, how you doing, mate? Yeah. Strong weekend. Strong weekend. Lots of quizzes. I'm ready for Bobby's quiz today. I've been studying up this weekend. Uh, have you? What, what have you been up to? Um, been staying in. Uh, staying. What else? I've been stupid. I've hurt my knee. <sighs> Stupidly, I've not been running for five or six years because of two little knee surgeries. And I just decided that I was bored in lockdown and I've been out running a few times and I've hurt my knee. So I'm... I'm from running. I'm, yeah, lesson, from running. So I'm kind of annoyed at myself, but it's all right. Just noticed, well, I've noticed early. Tell me, Mohammed, you got Mohammed Ali in the background oh, today? Yeah. You know, I like to change the backdrop every week. He's, that's the best sport. I'll put it out there. If cool. anyone could show me a better sporting or more iconic sporting picture of all time, then I want to see it because that for me is the best one. Right. That's that's actually a good question. I wonder what people would consider as the most iconic sporting photo of all time. That one obviously is very iconic. Mm. Uh, I might have a little look later, actually. That's like my that. favourite, anyway. And up there, David Abianchetti. Screaming at the ref, that's pretty iconic <laughs> as well. In the world, I bet, I bet Steve Lyon's got a few good ones of those well, in his archive. Get Steve Lyon on the show, and get we could get Steve on the show actually, get him talk through his best squash picks. But Very yeah, good. that's pretty, um, he's a pretty iconic character. I've had so many messages about having Davide on the show. Um, what a legend! And we've also got Stuart Bozer, Stuart Boswell, yeah. top four in the world, yeah, legend. But we've I mean, I still have nightmares about playing Bosnia. He just used to shock me. He used to live in Manchester, obviously married to Vicky um, Botwright, Boswell now. And he used to, we used to play once, twice a week in practice for five years. And I think yeah. I won once. He was such really? a good player. Yeah. Such a good player. Yeah. If you don't have injuries, again, tough sport with injuries. But, yeah, looking forward to hearing what these two nice. guys say. Like, definitely amazing, these two boys. Like, they're obviously really good friends. But as, you, uh, as you've said before, like they're, they're like, they're very different characters, right? Boz is like quite reserved and straight laced, like actually really good sense of humour, quite dry, but very sort of quiet unless you know him. And then uh, Davide's complete opposite. So um, mm. funny, funny little dynamic those boys have got going on, but both, um, both great guys. So yeah, looking forward to today. Absolutely. Let's get them on. Here he is. Oh. <laughs> you made it. You made it. <laughs> Made it. Well done. Who was, oh, right. who was in your re, uh, meeting room? Well, I, I don't know. I just copied. No, I don't know. I thought I was in the right room, but then uh, I was alone. So I don't know. Uh, <laughs> you thought it'd be me that couldn't do it, didn't you? I thought so. I'm impressed they actually yeah. did it. Oh. It's the yeah. first time I'm using Zoom, though. Is yeah. That, uh, okay. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm old school WhatsApp stuff, you know. Old uh, <laughs> school WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> Old school, everything. Yeah. How are you guys? Yeah, all right. Good. Hanging in there. How about you? Doing well. Uh, well, in Switzerland, uh, we never really have a lockdown, so we went out. Uh, we did pretty much the same thing, well, apart from restaurants, bar, and stuff. But we know, like in Italy or I don't know, England, I guess as well, where we are all locked down. We could. Uh, we could go out and go for a walk and do stuff. So it's not too bad. I'm not sure you're built for lockdown anyway, Davide, are you? Well, I'm not built for lockdown when I have kids uh, because they don't go to school. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not made for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh, mate. I'm with you. I'm with you. Not made for it. Jesus Christ. Two months for, <laughs> two months for and no, and no kindergarten, and no take childcare. Um, yeah, destroyed this. They destroyed me, honestly. <laughs> what have they been learning? What have you been teaching them? Ah, uh, geez, I'm I'm good with that because here in Switzerland, I cannot do anything. German, my German is zero, so, so. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anything. Crack on. <laughs> so, how, how, what languages do the kids speak? Like, because in Switzerland, it always impresses me. They speak like five. Like Nikki Muller speaks like five languages, right? Well, in fact, uh, well, my girlfriend does speak you know, German, English, French, and a bit of Italian, actually, yeah. Uh, I'm only speak Italian, this kind of English I can probably produce, and, uh, and that's it. 
<laughs> but my, my kids, they speak, English, uh, they speak uh, yeah, Italian, German, and they understand a bit of English because we talk in English at home. Listen, mate, your English was, when you were shouting at those referees, your English was <laughs> absolutely fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I guess so, because they are, everybody understood pretty well, considering the amount of fines I got. <laughs> what about you, Boz? How was your language skills? Uh, terrible, but whatever English Davida knows, it's because of me. So is it? <laughs> maybe not the maybe not the accent. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you two go, you two go way back, don't you? You two, you're not. For those of you who don't know the the background, kind of unlikely friends, really, in many ways. Different personalities. We've got the crazy Italian, the laid back Aussie. Well, you two have been good, like best friends, a long, long time, right? Tell us a little bit about your relationship. Uh, yeah, but well, if I, I think... can say, Boza is not so calm. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a big pretending thing, you know. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> Maybe not in not... practice. <laughs> oh, Saturday afternoon matches, I remember like rackets flying over the other court and getting the, <laughs> our coach coming to the club, uh, to the court <laughs> upstairs and said, sorry, boys, can you try to be a little bit more quiet? <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> this is news to me. Whenever I played Bozer, he was just too busy chopping me up to uh, lose his temper. <laughs> yeah, so uh, don't come. Don't did come anyone ever it. beat you, Bozer? Did you ever lose a practice match ever? A lot. Yeah, I had a few people that I couldn't beat. I don't think I ever beat Surav in a practice match. Actually, like I just couldn't <laughs> figure out. And Marcus Barrett as Marcus well. Like Barrett. I, I think yeah. that's that's everyone's yeah, trip over to Halifax and then chopped up and then I'd, I'd ask for another hit a couple of days later thinking I'm going to get ready for it, go back and get chopped even, even Marcus's worse. Marcus's so. name comes up a lot when it comes to the best practice players of all time. <laughs> <laughs> it comes up a lot. No, Marcus, uh, it's, yeah. out of, uh, it's out of challenge, to be honest. He, when, he, when he moved to Milano for uh, like two years or so, I was like playing... I remember often. that. I remember that. I cannot remember how many rackets I broke <laughs> on the practice match. I, honestly, my, he was... He was, he, he was embarrassing sometimes. He was just embarrassing. <laughs> uh, yeah. After three games, I had to tell him, like, um, you know, like members, like, do you want to do another two? Let's do against. One of my one of my quiz questions later was going to be was going to try and find out how many rackets David had actually broken in his <laughs> career, but I'm not sure that's even possible. Like, I was going to do it to the nearest thousand as well. <laughs> yeah, I calculated that actually a bit once you did? in a while, and yeah, well. You know, by every obviously considering junior time, professional <laughs> practice match must be an average of twenty a year. <laughs> you know, twenty twenty five a year. So. Yeah. dreams. You've always been a sponsor's dream. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not, not sure about that. So what what are you what are you boys up to now? So obviously, like Boz, you've moved to uh, Australia from Qatar. Yeah. So we got here. Uh, I started here in January, so um, yeah, it's kind of uh, yeah, a few months into sort of national coaching role here at the at the national centre. Uh, yeah, but then obviously a little bit in a holding pattern at the moment, sort of working from home. So yeah, that's yeah. where we're at. David, I, you, you I coaching? Like holding pattern. That's a bit like it's a bit <laughs> like you, you used to. I used to feel a bit like that on the backhand side playing against Bozza. Yeah, <laughs> and, holding pattern. And David, I. His yeah, backhand was yeah. a joke. Yeah, but... had the holding pattern on the backhand. <laughs> backhand with Boza is like playing Barcus with Ali game. It's just annoying <laughs> all the way. <laughs> just annoying all the way. <laughs> no, I'm, uh, I'm in Switzerland since uh, five, six, seven years now. Six, seven years, uh, too many. Uh, coaching uh, for uh, Liechtenstein Federation, coaching in a club here in... Uh, Switzerland as well. Vaduz, um, is that right? Yeah. yeah, my friend. The, the great Vaduz team, the great federation of Liechtenstein. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm pretty much, yeah, but I go, I go very often back to Italy. Like, not uh, at the moment, no, not lately. Not <laughs> lately. Jesus, don't tell me about it. Four months without being in Italy. Boom. That's it. You need, I'm done. And you both, got, you both got young families now. You mentioned girlfriend, Davide. At any point, you're going to get married or? Oh, I'm hanging in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try really hard not to. Um, well, I guess um, 
Yeah, yeah. I guess I have to like at some stages, but uh, yeah. <laughs> just dawned on him. Just dawned on him during the podcast. <laughs> yeah, actually. <laughs> actually, maybe I have to. But you, you're all married. You guys are all married. Yeah. Yeah, none of us are living in sin. It's only you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Catholic. Don't try and drag anyone else down. Well, but you know, I'm in Switzerland. They are Protestant here, so whatever they are, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> let's not start getting re- religious now. Come yeah. on. Let's go back. Oh, let's yeah. go back. Let's go back to the old days. Come on, like how? When did you? When did you guys first start? Obviously, like good friends. When did? When did that sort of start? Or when did you both start on tour? And um, well, I think I, I think I met David the first time. I went to probably maybe my third PSA tournament that his dad was running and I turned up and Ian Higgins and I were like staying ridiculously too far away from where the tournament was. I got stuck in traffic and turned up five minutes too late and yeah, I think I, yeah. Was that for the qualifying draw? Yeah, yeah, so I missed the draw, got a zero and I was, yeah, I was distraught. That was my first Yeah, but that was, a, we, you were with Torricini. Yeah, 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 with his mum. Oh. She drove us. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she was driving <laughs> yeah, about 240 k's an hour uh, <laughs> after we were stuck in traffic and we still didn't make it. On time. Oh, so, this is the uh, old days. This is the old days. Yeah, that was, that was the first time I met Davida. And then, was, I don't know, maybe a year later, you came over to Reading. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, maybe a year later. Or two later. Yeah, yeah, a year later or two later. I came over and uh, uh, the, the Italian, we know, we know squash. Uh, knowledge which i did not have any not that i have much now but anyway and uh actually Stuart and anthony they were there and they uh rickets right rickets yeah rickets yeah and they were uh very very uh you know just not they were really welcoming like they made me i was alone i actually had my girlfriend back there with the ex-girlfriend we thanks god because she asked scottish so she could speak english because my english back in the day was uh zero and it was kind of difficult for me being Italian, being away, being in England alone, no mama, no no friends, no this, no that. Bad food. And, uh, well, <laughs> 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 and, uh, and uh, I remember um, some of the English players also did not really, you know, uh, I remember, well, I'll make some names even, who cares? Kenzie, Stephen Meads, uh, Scully Endley. You know, they did not know me, not really interested to play with me or training with me. So I started like with the boys and they were like, uh, you know, I got close we to them. We didn't want to train with were... you either, but we had no choice. <laughs> <laughs> good bunch yeah. of players in Reading, weren't they? A good bunch of players yeah. in Reading back in the day. Did that start with um, like Rodney and Sarah Fitch used to go over, right? To Cavisham with Mike Johnson, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So how you uh, ended up there, Bozo? Yeah, I think, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it goes way back. Like, I think, um, yeah, Rod was obviously there. And, you know, I think every Australian at some stage went through. Dan Jensen, I remember going there for a big night out with you once in Reading. Ricketts, Dan Jensen. It was... <laughs> yeah. Um, Times. yeah, and then and then Dan, yeah, Dan was there. And then, yeah, Ricketts and I went across. And then Pilly came, you know, after yeah, us. And yeah. it was all kind of down to Mike Johnson, you know, who sort of, around the club and just let us pretty much live there and he'd feed us balls and, you know, um, yeah, we couldn't probably ask for anything better in terms of being an Australian and pitching up in England for the first time. Just the travel, like, obviously, a lot of the Aussies lived in Holland as well, didn't they? At one point, everyone just came over (coughs) to um, Europe, really, didn't they? Is that kind of one of the things, I know you've you've gone back now to Australia and you're trying to build the programme up again. Is that one of the things... You guys needed it for your career, but has that been to the detriment, possibly, of Aussie squash actually back home because there's not been the players visible day in day out? Or I think it has a bit, yeah. Like I think it has probably become even more so, you know, in the last ten years or so. You know, like a lot of, say, when I was growing up, you know, you'd had a lot of people still coming back to Australia. You know, like Rod Isles would be coming back, Craig Rowland, people you would see top ten players all the time. You know, like in Brisbane or you know guys coming back to Melbourne or, or Sydney as well. Uh, and it's probably been even more the case recently where, you know, players have gone, you know, to Europe or sort of North America now and, you know, players probably aren't coming back quite as much. So, um, it, I mean, it's something that has to happen because you can't live in Australia and keep, you know, going back and forwards on the tour all the time. But, yeah, it probably, yeah, it probably is something that, you know, some of the players have missed out on not as many 
people coming back and they don't see that sort of high level squash quite as often as, as I did when I was younger. I mean, it was an unbelievable generation of players, wasn't it? That when you were coming through, um, I mean, you just named some of them there, but you know, coming through from you know, start with Jeff and into Rodney's and Dickmars and Bretts, and then down to um, you mentioned you know the Craig Rollins, the, the Rodney Isles, yourself, Ricketts, Johnny White, Palmer. Um, it was Johnny <laughs> Squash. Johnny with it. So, I mean, the list goes on. There was an unbelievable <laughs> list of there. players on the Aussies. Good knowledge. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, squash had a real boom, obviously, on the back of Jeff and, you know, that period, you know, when there was, you know... That's just Christina, in the male side, obviously, Rodals. people as well, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you know, other side, you've got, you know, Sarah, Michelle, reserving, you know, um, you know, there was lots of times where there was, you know, five or so Australians in the top ten in the world. It was kind of a, yeah, a pretty, pretty good time in squash for Australia. A lot as well. And I'll come to you first on this, David. A lot of personalities back in the day as well. Um, some of those guys you mentioned, I mean, the Aussies always had a, a special personality anyway. I remember once going to, I think the first time I ever played league in Europe, I went to play Belgium league and I played Billy Hadrill and I was 18. <laughs> at the juniors, I had no clue what was going on and this guy came on. He was having a, he was having a cigarette like two minutes before the match outside, and I felt like he might as well have had a beer in between games. And he played fifteen skid bows in the first three rallies. <laughs> and I was like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, quick quick comment on one thing first. I wanted to say that Mike Johnson, because he never wanted to be thankful tangle or anything for everything he did, but Mike Johnson was the nicest guy, squash guy I've ever met. And he, whatever I've done in my career or whatever, uh, he actually uh, is up to, it's because of him. And he, uh, now I know he's in Canada, whatever, I hope he's fine, but he's such a, a nice guy. Um, well, yeah, just quickly on your career, we'll come back to the personalities because we've not yeah. done the proper intro. Like, so you will highest rank you at 24. Yes. So when you when you talk about where you come from, massive achievement, highest Italian of all time. I'm I'm uh, not mistaken. No, well, yeah. I know you got all these different <laughs> Italians in at one point. They weren't Italian like Marcus and Galisti and Swellem and stuff. You did sound proud of that. But I still I still have done better than Marcus in PSA ranking, though. It's true, true. You didn't win any practice matches, but you were higher ranked overall, which is what counts. Um, <laughs> Quarter finalist in the World Open as well, 2003. And yeah. one stat, I tried to get a video from the main man, but he's too busy to return my calls these days. Yeah. Peter Nickel once told me, he got asked, I played an exhibition with him. After the exhibition match, Peter, who was the hardest person you've ever mm. played in your life? And you're expecting, oh, is he going to say Power, Palmer, David A. Bianchetti, he said. <laughs> He said, I could never beat that guy. He said, the head head was like 4-0. <laughs> I, uh, I, um, I think, you know, I use this one to take the piece out of Marcus. Because Marcus, he cannot play me. He cannot play Peter. Like, he absolutely got chopped every single time he played. So, every, you know, to get a bit of revenge out of, out of the fact that he was killing me all the time, I was saying, how can you not beat this guy? It's actually, you know, it's quite easy to do it. You know, you just have to do it. And he was getting crazy. And then... Um, <laughs> And then there was an interview that Peter, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know where he was, but he was an interview, and he, you know, there were two questions. Uh, he must have been a bit drunk, a bit, a bit drunk or something at that night. But he said they've been asked which is the hardest player to read, and he said Davide Bianchetti. And then he said they asked him again which is the most awkward player to play, and he said Davide Bianchetti. <laughs> they, the, 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 the guy who was making the interview was laughing because he said, well, my God, are you, are you gonna say, must be something wrong with it. And then, I changed, and then I put this video call, this interview, I sent it to Marcus, and I like, told him every time we were playing practice matches <laughs> just to show him the interview <laughs> of Peter. Did you beat yeah, Marcus yeah. that day? You got in his head? Yeah, I, no, yeah, no, it's impossible. I lost him. No, no, it's impossible. Still lost. No, it's, it's, oh, sure, I lost. I don't remember. I, I don't recall any. No, maybe one or twice. It's unbelievable. So did you never lose? Did you never lose to Peter? I don't remember. I, I know I won uh, twice. I don't remember losing to him. No, yeah. my, um, 
Uh, he beat him in the Worlds once. In, I remember he was world number one, that Worlds in Pakistan. Was it 2003? Yeah, 2003, he, 2003 he, you beat him in the, like, the last 16 or last 32, yeah. I remember. Last sixteen, but he was he obviously was not it was not his day. He was uh, not hundred percent fit, and um, it's not uh, uh, you know it was not uh, yet something probably uh, was also a bit sick or something. But yeah, that was the, that that day, and then I and then in the league Bundesliga for what it counts. They all count, Bosser. World number four. Uh, yeah, long time ago. So I'm um, tough era as well. I'm going through some of the people who ranked around you at that point. Nickel, Power, Palmer, Linku, White. That's a tough era there. Um, Ricketts as well, your good mate. It was the toughest. Yeah. It was the toughest. We won three, two world teams with Australia. That was a great team. Um, three Commonwealth Games silvers, one bronze. Yeah. Two questions. All to England in doubles. <laughs> <laughs> in fairness, there was you mentioned Boz's backhand. You were about the only person. No, I think we had a big advantage because we had the lefty on that side. But your backhand was about the only one who could cope with that. You and Palmer, to be fair. Well, I remember thinking like I think the first time, first time we lost was to Beach and Nickel in the doubles. Lefty again. And I remember just thinking after that, like, yeah, it gets to the stage where you can't hit that many backhands. Yeah, you're off. Yeah, with any pace, like, like, yeah, and I was just, yeah, I think eventually I just got picked off in the end, like, uh, yeah, like it becomes sort of pretty draining, you know, the ball getting behind you all the time on that side. It's uh, yeah. definitely a lefty is a better option, yeah. The um, best career memory? Uh, so, no, I'd probably say, like, I didn't really have anything that stood out individually. Um, I'd probably say one of, you know, like the world teams, actually. Um, you know, like, Maybe you know finishing third or something like that when we yeah, got a win over a team that um, we weren't expected to. Um, yeah, and probably like later on in my career when I maybe realised that you know there's not going to be a big individual kind of result coming my way. You know, like being part of a team. You know, um, I think like finishing third. What, or finishing yeah. finishing third above the two that you won just because you appreciated it more. Uh, I actually I wasn't involved in the second one. I was injured in that two thousand three. Oh, I've got you down here that um, you were part of it. Two world teams. No, I've got. no, I'll pick oh, you up on that one. Uh, so yeah, two thousand one. Usually wrong that one, are they? Mate, you, you're slacking. I don't know what's going on. You're right. So I know it's early <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah. um, so no, two thousand and one when we won in uh, Melbourne, uh, but I was pretty young then and. I didn't. I played a lot of dead rubbers, you know, like a lot of best of threes. That's a beach uh, Price, the name, dead rubber beach, or we used to call him. Yeah, so Pricey and uh, Palmer won, you know, sort of all of those. So I didn't really play a big part, and I probably at that stage felt, you know, it was something, you know, better coming along, but it wasn't. So, <laughs> so I'd probably, I'd probably say probably for later on in my career, playing world teams was the, the highlights. I'd say. Daryl, do you ever play these guys? Yeah, yeah, um, David a lot. Bozza, not as much, but I've definitely got chopped by Bozza a few times. Um, <laughs> I think I played you when you were just starting out, maybe. If you... we, had, uh, we played in a glass court in a shopping centre somewhere. Uh, oh, um, Santiago, was it? Yeah, yeah, oh, it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I lost. I lost you every did, time you did to your Boz. ankle, I think. Yeah, maybe. I had, I had some good yeah. games with Davide. Me and Davide played quite a few times in. Uh, like European clubs and stuff like that, didn't we? Oh, you two, yeah. I'd have left you to it and come back an hour and a half later and just watched the <laughs> it. Was, in those days, I couldn't hit a shot either. So me and David are just playing length game up and down the back end. You two had quite a similar <laughs> style in a way. Neither yeah. of you play like a really fast pace. Like both of you kind of like play that medium three quarter pace and you just try to like rate the other one, especially on a high tin normal court. That would have been. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Davide was a good good league player as well, so like yeah, he just he never give up either. Um, we had some we had some good battles. Yeah, I remember that actually. I, yeah, I, I like leagues. Yeah, I yeah. like leagues. We but, had good uh, games. I like, always try to always try to get the ref involved. Just to try and get Davide to lose his head more more no, for entertainment value, really, more than anything. That's not right, actually. I, if I if I if I could have choice, like I would have like play a match and the and the place could have ref. I'm sure I would have less head explosions than ever proper referee. <laughs> so having, having, a, having a call one inch, so one, one, one call each during the match, you can choose the player. The player chooses it. I think I would be okay with that. 
Do you, Back to the day. Is there one decision that sticks in your head that's the worst decision you've ever seen? Is there one where you think you still don't understand it now? I mean, there's probably most of them, but... Not a lot. A lot. A lot. Did you but ever get... I remember... Was there one remember, in Sweden? Uh... No, in Sweden... Oh, have you got it? I just, when I Googled Davide, <laughs> the second thing that came up after Wikipedia was <laughs> World Referees Lobby Life Ban. Life Ban! <laughs> 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 Yeah, well, but this is, wasn't fair, actually. I, call, I, just call, I just called the referee Pagliaccio, which you mean clown. I mean, it's not clown, that big yeah. deal. That was, was that Sweden? Italian, though? Did he understand you? Uh, well, uh, uh, no. No, that was uh, Holland. Uh, Rotterdam somewhere, I think. Rotterdam, I was doing that. No, um, there was an Egyptian guy. Actually, we are good, you know, kind of uh, friends even. Uh, talking a lot outside the court. But... Um, yeah, he gave me, a, I don't know, I can't remember. And then I called him Pagliaccio. Uh, I, he says 33 times, which is not possible. But <laughs> <That's great. laughs> it was because there was one referee that spoke Italian, wasn't it? No, he, well, apparently his clown or Pagliaccio is similar to Arabic. Which, mean, which means what which, in Arabic? Pagliaccio means the same. Oh. Apparently. But I cannot, uh, I can hardly believe that. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I apparently told him Pagliaccio all the time, all the, all in between the first and the second game, or the second and the third game. I can't remember. And uh, so he got pissed off because I, I told him like 33 times. He, he said that uh, it was not so bad. But uh, no, in Sweden, I actually got the worst, the worst match of my life. In, you know, I was I sent remember. off. I was sent off with Stuart. That's why I remember it. That's why I made a note I, earlier. Because we were playing each other. I would have thinking, forgotten that, yeah. But you I couldn't was, handle it that this, this person thought you said something that you didn't. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. in Italy, in Italian, it's like when you cannot say, I can't say, we cannot swear in this uh, chat, can we? But you know, the, the F word. The F, 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 yeah. <laughs> Crack well, on. Major. The F U C K word, you know, in English you can say freaking, or instead of say you know, you say freaking because you don't wanna you wanna be nice. In Italian it's also the same, almost the same. Instead of saying baffanculo, now I swear, like which is the, not the right one, you say banculo, banco, culo, so so you make it like it's slightly different not to be to be polite. And that guy, which he apparently he thinks he speaks Italian, which he didn't, he understood culo somewhere. So he thought I said Papan culo, and he sent me off with a match with Bosna. <laughs> I was what was, that was What was it like, love all in the first game? No, it was one or two. I don't know. Was, it wasn't that far into it, though, was it? No, it wasn't yeah, maybe that it was far the second. Into it. Well, it was the second game. Yeah, the second game, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> So that one's that. For that. You've always had the. Uh, I've always said like there's, you can tell when there's going to be a really good match. Not always for the squash. Sometimes just for the tastiness between the two opponents. Sometimes for the characters. Whenever you played, there was always a crowd of the PSA players watching, because yeah. they were always ready. I remember me. playing Omar Abdulaziz once in Egypt, <laughs> and it was like. Yeah. The crowd was full of beer. Everyone was just sitting there like popcorn, like just re ready. Who's going to take him bets? Who's going to kick off this? Yo, yeah, oh, sorry, but Omar Abdelaziz is nothing less than me, though, I tell no, you. No, he's the only person I've seen who's the same as you. Yeah. I've got one great so, story about him. I actually, got two. One of them, one of them I played him in um, Bermuda, and um, uh, I, <laughs> I beat him free love, but the last point was contentious for some reason. And he was... By the time I came off the court, got my bag, changed my shoes, put my rackets in, he was still arguing with the ref from the court. <laughs> and I'd literally, 10 minutes later, was gone. Gone. And he was just, he's similar to Davide. He's so expressive and non-stop. He was the same he was as a coach, coach now. He's the same as a coach, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Who, me? No, uh, Omar. <laughs> he's the same ah. as a coach now. Um, after oh, the, um, I think there was one British Junior Open where... <laughs> He was, there was one where he got the overall of the match somehow and it was all kicking off, but there was another one where 
he was going on about the refereeing decision. I said, look, it's the same for everyone. He went, no, we've come all the way from Egypt. We can't accept these decisions. We've come all this way. It's not fair. And I was like, well, if we're going on those principles, then the people from Australia and New Zealand have got the most to complain about because they've come even yeah. further than you. And he's going, no, no, but we came from Egypt. And he just wouldn't understand what I was saying. He was just going crazy. I like him, but he's He's such a good guy, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Monza, do you have any head-offs with the ref? You were always pretty... Uh, no, I wouldn't, yeah. I mean, there's plenty of times, I think probably even, you know, like when I was a younger starting out on PSA you know when you're a bit desperate and maybe you're kind of not really uh you're caught up in the moment there's a few things that I look back and cringe at when I think of them now probably later on in my career I had a bit more clarity and you know could kind of separate the sad, good and bad calls and accept them a bit better yeah. the sad thing these days is and I guess it'll happen to all of us but the the youngsters maybe because we didn't have squash tv so much in you know back in the day it was on here and there but not the same amount of coverage as now and then all the highlights are accessible and so on it's actually not that easy to find the good clips of you two playing so for our younger viewers i've got to just show a little clip i'll go bozza first this is toc and and it reminded me just watching this one rally it reminded me of how early you used to take the ball and the pace you used to play at i think you were one of the first people who kind of started that you know the pace of the game now it's so fast isn't it you were one of the first people I thought you know I used to think I volleyed until I watched you and you were trying to volley everything so let's have a little yeah. show you must have played these boys a few times as well say again you must have played these boys a few times as well yeah I remember like Boz said about the broken rackets I remember playing him at Hallamshire in practice a few times and just literally wanting to when you were coming back from we'll talk about that in a minute Boz when you're coming back from your back injury and you were yeah. getting back into it and you were ranked like 545 in the world and I was ranked maybe eight and you were still chopping me free loving practice. <laughs> <laughs> so this is um, this is TOC with Jimbo. Just watch how early Boz takes the ball in this rally. Can you see that? Uh, HD? It's not HD back in those days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this, where's the, where's the ball? Yeah, yeah Boz, Boz's length, whenever I played him, was oh. like always sort of pretty much spotless. Just look and how early he's taking it. Looks like I'm getting work there. No, you're in control of this. Look at that back on hold. Boz, not, not many people beating you at the shoe game. You put that on my Instagram the other day. <laughs> oh. oh. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> No, but if I can say something about Bozza, I think he, um, I mean, it's not, it's not exactly, I don't know, I would not call him Rami in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, imaginations and uh, variety and whatever, whatever. And of course, his technique was unbelievably solid, especially the back end, as we already said, but he was... Really, the one or one of the, the one I felt that he was hitting the ball early, but I would not even say always on the volley, but early on the bounce every time, like yeah. he, or every like uh, a loose ball or just a ball in the middle was just like trying to get because his racket preparation, as yeah, we, Mike always, Johnson oh, oh. told us, uh, always back there, always ready there, the ball's bouncing and then doom, 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 doom. And it was like, that what made the pace so fast. because he, And then, of course, he was volleying as a, as a consequence. But, uh, he never let the ball hit the back wall. Yeah. 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 yeah I, think, um, I think at some stage, um, like probably growing up as a junior, I didn't really have much to my game. And uh, when I started working with Rod, Martin, and you know, obviously Jeff, and it was kind of just trying to you know, develop something that, you know, with my game that could be relatively competitive. And I think it kind of I just... Yeah, it became, I was never going to really hit that many sort of outright winners, but I was never probably physically good enough to retrieve a lot of balls. So it sort of, I think, just came back to, you know, trying to hit the ball accurately and trying to take the ball as early as I could and you know, play as fast as I could, especially when I was a bit younger. And then probably later in my career, I probably lacked, you know, once that kind of wore off and people could live with that, I didn't really have much else. So it was kind of, a, didn't really have a great, much variation to it, but it worked to a certain very it's modest as ever. Very yeah. modest as ever. You got to four in the world and then you had the back issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, so I think that, that was 2003 and yeah, I was out for probably, yeah, probably two years really. Like I, was, I wasn't oh, injured for two years, but it was probably 18 months and then sort of six months getting back into it. And you so, literally got to the point, didn't you, where, you know, you'd be practicing and you literally had to lie on the floor and stuff. You couldn't do... Uh, well, no, it wasn't you're probably quite that bad. It was just... You were, you're yeah, all it was just... Um, you know, you had to do your exercise, didn't you, for painstakingly for however many hours a day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, going to practice was like an hour warm up, you know. Well, I think you were doing that more than <laughs> that was. He was my perfect practice partner. He's the only person who he was ready after. <laughs> Him doing back and you just doing shoulder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, so there, that was yeah, a bit of a sort of dark period, I guess. But it probably, yeah, sort of, you know, I got back playing and, you know. Probably appreciated a lot more the second time around, to be honest. Top, even it's top ten as well, second time round as well, which amazing achievement after that long out. How many? How many yeah, matches? Yeah, I think did I snapped back well. in for a. Say again. Sorry. At the start, like, I remember you having to play like five Ks and stuff, and you like, did you not lose a match for like I don't know how many tournaments you won in a row or something? I just remember. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I sort of started with yeah, a few in Australia and. New Zealand and stuff it was yeah kind of right from the so you got, you, you're the number one seed in the five yeah. and like you draw like Stuart Boswell comes through qualifying you draw Stuart first round you're like oh. <laughs> yeah I had, yeah I think I had a lot of yeah, a lot of those you know playing the same people and, um yeah but it was uh yeah that's a good effort long. getting back to top 10 after um, that amount, so I'm out. quick question on last question on your career and we'll just have a quick look at Davide as well um who's hardest who's the hardest player you played in your career? Uh, there's a few. I, I'd say my record with Peter Nickel is the opposite of Davidus. I think really? uh, Peter, eh? I think I'm zero and twelve or something with him. Uh, I think probably Galtier as well. I always felt really, yeah, like you know, you know, there's people just your games don't match up with. I mm -hmm. felt like Palmer. Uh, that was, <laughs> that, was you, that was you. That was you. No, 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 Stuart. Well, he's doing it for Stuart. <laughs> Oh, I can, yeah, I'm, I can probably pick all of the guys, you know. <laughs> no, not really, but I've seen you play with Palmer like. a few times, and uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say those those two for me that yeah didn't feel like ever really matched up that well with. All right, David Day, let's have a quick look. You got some backhand holds in this. Uh, got some. <laughs> bit. We have got a great backhand hold. Can you see hold. that? Look, he's playing against some guy who's actually playing for England, not that it looks like in the kit. Can you see this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, are you, are you really showing this match? He's picked, a, he, he's picked a special rally as well, because it's 7 minutes 30 rally. this clip. I've picked, I've, I win this rally, I've just wanted to show it. No. <laughs> a 9 o'clock match a European in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Crash. <laughs> Look at this hold. Oh, I nearly <laughs> hit the front wall there. Oh. oh. Oh, see that come yeah. out. No, it's not fair, though. It's not that's, fair. that's all that we got on YouTube. The rest of it was just you shouting at the ref. <laughs> no, actually, there is a good video where I'm trying to play <laughs> when I'm playing Mossad in Turkey. I saw that one. And it, he, he, went, he put me in a. Uh, I, he, I go short, he play long, and I go the right way. I dive to get the ball back, play the post. Then I try to, to stand up and go to get the other ball. And I sleep on my sweat and I fall over again. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I and rolled I that one out because I wanted a glass court one. I didn't want you. I thought you complained. Nick, where's the glass court? So I didn't want you to do that one. <laughs> yeah. I remember Thanks that match that. though. You were we played like it was Europeans. Obviously, if England when we had the four man team. Quite often teams wouldn't try against us because they were like, "There's no point because we're going to lose three and four anyway." And I remember you played and you were kind of like half trying, half not trying. And you're so relaxed anyway. I remember in the beginning, I was like seven love down in the first game because, and you were just getting <laughs> kicked everywhere because you were kind of not trying, but you were chopping me. <laughs> I, remember, I remember I was, I was pretty upset because they, they, they made very uh, rest that day. And I hate to play in the morning. I hate. And I saw I was like very upset. And Marcus did not even come. At the, at the, with the uh, by bus with us to watch the match, so he arrived later, and he arrived at the court after the first game or second game, I don't remember. And he he sat down next to me, so I went like to him, and he like he was even trying to tell me something, which obviously 
Huh? I know I went with the... <laughs> Go back to bed. <laughs> Go back to bed. Are you, are, you, are you even trying to talk to me now? <laughs> I remember that much. The question, like, do you think there's... Um, I mean, I just... When, I, when I, we put it on social media that you were coming on, obviously Bozza as well, when we mm. said, especially with you, the amount mm. of responses we got of people going, I want to hear what Davide is going to say, mm. like, oh, yeah. just... <laughs> ridiculous love for you do you think that it's the way the game is now there's not as many characters nowadays like you guys we mentioned some of those people early on some of the aussies we mentioned and then torricini ian higgins all of those people <laughs> there's like nowadays no... is it just the way if you say one thing to the ref you get punished so that doesn't encourage or is it just maybe the way of the world now there's not the same characters or what well for sure, I cannot say that my way is a good way or is the right way to do it. It's so, entertaining, uh, though. Well, yeah. you know, I, <clears throat> I think it has to be like a, a bit in the middle. Like, uh, I think, uh, you know, you have to get the personality. Uh, it's also about, you know, how to express uh, people. It's about natural thing. You know, I, I cannot, uh, if I have feelings, I have to, I cannot keep it inside me. I have to, they just go out. So is uh is actually more difficult for me to to stay calm and do this but to be honest at the moment it's it's a bit boring it's a bit boring because um i know the referees are much harder and uh, and actually players are so good because they they play very clean they go around through the interference so uh, you know they are good but what i don't what i what i don't like so much is the after match comments on the social media. Uh, was not, it's not meant my day, or uh, he was better than me. Uh, a lot to learn from it. Or uh, just, just say, I'm, I'm, I lost. I'm pissed off like hell. I just, I play so bad that I could not. Everybody's so politically correct. That, oh. Did you see uh, Amanda Sobey's comments? Did you see that at, from the uh, from Chicago? Oh, yeah, oh, I read after that one. the match. Yeah, you see that one. I bet you like that. That's very honest. Yeah, yeah. Thumbs up. Double thumbs up from David. Yeah. That's what you want more of, eh? No, I mean, honestly, yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more. I know there is always a lot to learn from uh, from losing and from uh, these and uh, from that. And he was, and then you have to be nice with the guy. If he wins, if you won, then maybe he was, surely he was better on the day. But, jeez, uh, come on. Uh, a bit less politically correct. Got it. Got it. I'll bear that in mind for next season. Well? I'll bear that in mind for next season. Yeah. Do if it, I say anything, please. I just say, Davide told me. Davide said, sure. uh, go for it. There was, yeah. I, I don't know whether you're able to tell this story now, but Bozza mentioned it before your dad. How's your dad doing, by the way? <laughs> awesome. Good. He's on, he doesn't do anything. What yeah. a legend. What a legend. He used to run some amazing tournaments. And I got yeah. in trouble once. You remember that one? <laughs> I was the most drunk i ever. Yeah. Come on, right. Uh, story time. Like, story really time. Cool. Story time. Before we do quiz, come on. I need some, uh, Let's have some stories. Am, you boys have got some can good ones. Can I say ones. a story about Nick? Yeah, yeah absolutely. My, and then, I'll get, and then I've got one for you, though. We do, oh, yeah. You do what I mean, and I've got one for you. A Come young on. Nick Matthew came down to play in a shopping mall with the Glasgow uh, in close to Brescia, organized by my father. Uh, I think you lost uh, you and Gra I and Adrian Grant. Who, I lost to uh, Derek Ryan in the semis, and then Granty played him in the final. Ah, okay, okay. And um, so we played late at night, and uh, everything was over. Uh, my father shut down, closed the lights, and everything, and the uh, shopping mall was closing, and. Um, and uh, where is Nick? Where is Nick? <laughs> so my father is looking, <laughs> he's gone looking for him. And uh, well, he found him somewhere <laughs> in a, in a, um, not in the best conditions ever. <laughs> in the toilet, not in the toilet. <laughs> it was Mick, I think it was Mick Roberts. Mick Roberts, it was. Stitch, we would. <laughs> what was what? funny about that? We, Granty was playing in the final and I was trying to coach him in between games and I was for some reason I was watching from two flights above drinking in a cafe overlooking the court and then when Granty finished the game I'd run down two flights probably got to him like with 30 seconds left breathe he tells it funny breathe like alcohol on his face <laughs> and then ran back up and then carried on drinking 
And yeah, it didn't end well. Yeah, I <laughs> Granny won though. Granny won, so the coaching must have been good. Yeah, must have. Yeah, must have. So your story is, I want you to tell me just quickly, <laughs> if you can, and I don't want to get you in trouble, but you've got to tell me your Italian Federation story with the military service, because that's the funniest story I've ever heard in squash. Oh, that's no problem. It's just a big shell. That's a, I'm not me. sure if I've heard this either. This is amazing. I have, I have no problem. I was Italian champion back in the days already, I think. Uh, we had a huge fight, uh, the, the president with my father. Uh, we kind of, uh, you know, uh, never liked each other. Uh, the, the president uh, wanted to do something against my father. So when I was supposed to go for a military service, which took one year in Italy, uh, you could always go to a special uh, sport groups, uh, which everybody used as before me. Uh, and the guy, the, the, the guy and the secretary, well, now I'm gonna get in trouble, I tell you, but uh, <laughs> they, they just decided not to send me because I was not good enough for the program. Uh, I was already Italian champion, and in that program, not only good players went to the military service, pretty much everyone. Okay, they were good players, like very good players, so Torricini made it, uh, all these players made it, and it was obviously worth it, but there were some, also some other players which hardly played squash, but they were friend of a friend, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So. I decided, uh, they decided not to send me to the special group. So I, uh, I, I, do, I did my normal one year service. I, uh, I went to play the Italian championship. Uh, I was uh, a bit uh, upset and I tried to punch the president, uh, which uh, I missed him a little bit, just <laughs> got it a little bit. Uh, and then from that moment on, we never played for the federation anymore for 10 years, 15 years. We got two different federations. Uh, that's it. That's the story. I like the bit you told me when you you were, you saw him after that year of military service, and you were like, "No, no, don't do anything, don't do anything." <laughs> and then you went to leave the club. Don't do anything, don't do anything. Walk out. And then as you were walking out, you saw him through the yeah. window, and he just kind of had a grin on his face, and you went, "No, nah, I'm going back in." And you went back in. <laughs> Actually, it was my father. It was my father telling me, let's go out. Don't do it. It's stupid. Don't do it. And then we said, I'll go out. And I walk out the door and I saw him smiling back. And I saw him and I just went back. <laughs> <laughs> Lost it. David, you got any about Buzzer? You must have one about Buzzer. A story about Buzzer? Yeah. yeah I've got a good one. Yeah. Well, a good one. A normal one. A normal uh, one? Yeah, he, uh, he went, uh, he was supposed to play a tournament in Brescia and he was playing, uh, he, he played a tournament in Pakistan before that, uh, before <laughs> arriving in Italy. <laughs> so he arrived to my place uh, like a few days before the tournament and um, he looked at me and like, I'm not feeling very well. <laughs> wow. He was in bed, lie down in my bed with my mom taking care of him for three days, completely <laughs> gone. <laughs> yeah, with uh, giving me banana. Remember you took you took me to the doctor as well. Yeah, like yeah, really and you had you had to try and translate what I was feeling, and I don't even I can't I could barely speak. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all, all sorts of food poisoning going on there. Yeah. So it was uh, yeah. But with both the stories, you know. Bozza is um, the PG, no. the PG story, yeah. don't they, Bozza? Squeaky clean, aren't they? Squeaky clean. clean. Go on then, Daz. Got it? Are we on quiz time? I need this uh, one. Okay. 3-1 down. 3-1. Okay. Boys, I do a little quiz at the end. I always wear my, uh, this is what, what I, what I wear now, nowadays. You need to uh, protective ooh. eyewear for this one. Anytime I'm, I'm called up. I have to change hat. We now have a Las Vegas nightclub hat, which I have absolutely no idea how I acquired. Um, <laughs> I might have been there with you, I think, on that trip. Yeah, maybe, but it's, uh, I don't know where I got it from. Anyway, I have an Italy versus Australia quiz. I say Italy versus Australia. There's three questions. One of them might have a few parts to it. Um, so, whoever gets... Where does England come into this? It doesn't. This is uh, all about our guests. <laughs> all right, not shall about, I... Not about shall us. I see you out there? No, no, you're in. You're in. Okay. 
You're All in. Right. Okay, first question. It's about the Women's Football World Cup. I know David A enjoys his football. Massive uh, Juventus fan. Um, first question. Italy played Australia in the 2019 World Cup, Women's World Cup group match. Group C match, actually. Um, th does anyone know what the score was and who won? Um, Nick, do you want to start us off? Man. Yeah. 1-0 um, Australia. Okay. Uh, I think it was 2-0 Australia. Bozza? Yeah, if I go 2-0, can I? Or I have to go 2-1 or something? Oh, no, you say what you want. I can. Okay, I, yeah, I, I, give half, I, I give half points out willy-nilly. So go I'll, for it. I'll take 2-0 two, two Australia as well. So no one's going for Italy. Not even the Italian. 2-1 <laughs> <Two, one> Italy. <laughs> no way! <laughs> yeah, 95th minute winner. In the group. Oh, Aussies won that. I thought Aussies were good because they got that <laughs> striker who's really good, aren't they, Aussies? It's Italy got further. Italy lost in the quarters They're to right Holland. Now. And They're Australia lost on penalties to Norway. Oh, There you go. So, uh, zero points all round. Well done, boys. Good start. Um, okay, got two more questions. Uh, I'm going to go... Do you want the squash one last? We'll have the squash one last. The next question. Who has won the most medals at the Summer Olympic Games. Is it Italy or Australia? Oh. Um, Australia by far. It's got to be Australia, doesn't it? By far. Okay. Who, who's going... Uh, it's, so, you're going to Australia. Boz going Australia. Nick's going... I'm just going to go Italy just because it's different. Okay. Italy. Come yeah. on, Canada. No. Summer, summer <laughs> Olympic. Yeah, in the you're history good at, like, of the Summer Olympics, field, not just in the last in, one. Also, like, you, I bet you won some things in like sports you're not even thinking of. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the, the first part of the question. So that's the first part of the question. Italy. Italy has the most. Okay. So <clears throat> Australia has less. How many medals? Total, so gold, silver, bronze. Has Australia won in the history of the Commonwealth in Commonwealth Games? It's not Commonwealth. That's about a million. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Olympic Games. How many total, ever? Total gold, medals. Gold, silver, bronze. Gold, silver, bronze. I'll give you. Let me give. Try and give you a clue as to they're not in the top five. They are sixth and eighth, I think. Maybe. I had it up. Add it up earlier. Uh, anyone want to take a guess while I try and give you a clue? If you want so to know that is. Australian total medals, right? So total medals, Australia at the history of the Commonwealth Games. Uh, come on, why do I keep saying Commonwealth Games? <laughs> Olympic Games. Well, I... Uh, let's the squash isn't uh, in it. What we, what, uh, 180? Up. In, the, in the history. Okay, 180. I think... That, do I need to give you a clue? Oh. Two hundred and thirty. Nick. Um. Two fifty. So you just gone higher. You're taking all the higher out of it. Okay. Nick is closest. It's four hundred ninety-seven. Wow, that's a lot. I have no idea about these numbers. No, no, no I off, mean, really. I'm not. I'm not saying they're they they're, they're great guesses, but I'm not sure what I would have guessed. But you know, I mean, it's not great to be honest. So anyway, I think Australia are eighth in the all-time medal table. Italy are sixth. So if Australia have 497 total, what are we going for for Italy? Nick's two nil nil up. Bozza, Davide, you need this. Six hundred. Okay. Uh, so four nine seven Australia, Italy's yeah sixth, I think. I have to check it later. If it's wrong, it doesn't matter. But yeah, it's about that. Five eighty six. I'll take five fifty. I'll take the low. Davide, Bosch, five five seven seven. Tell you what, you know your Italian sport. He knows his, it. He knows it like <laughs> the back of his hand. <laughs> Okay, good man. Okay, last question. Last question in Bobby's quiz. Okay, how many players 
in the top 300 in the PSA rankings are from Italy or Australia. So, first of all, this should be this should be an easy one for you, but yeah, who has the most? Men's and women's combined. Men's and women's combined. So, who, who has more, Italy or Australia, in the top 300? Australia. Yeah, it should be, should be Australia, but not so much. Boz? Um, yeah, I'll take Australia on well, that. Boz is the national coach. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you're all right. I don't, I, you know, you've all got a point on the board, yeah, it's Australia. Buzzies Clearly Australia. Out. Okay. Yeah. How many men and women total are in the top 300 Italians? So how many Italians are in the top 300? How many combined men and women? Yeah, but are we counting, are we counting those ones who are uh, whatever license uh, they play only in Italy? They might play one tournament. Top 300. Just in the rankings. 300. Just obviously. Five. Okay. Buzz? Six. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick, seven. Nick, Nick, Nick's correct is seven. Who are seven Italian players in the top 300? You're probably still right there. You forgot seven, to seven Italians. They seven told, Italian. me, they told yeah, yeah. me that all the fines you've paid over the years, they've like, reimbursed your membership, so you're still ranked 284. He's got, he's got membership till 2140. Yeah, they've reimbursed uh, your membership. Oh. Big fines. Okay, Nick, Please not to. Nick's, I think Nick's won the quiz, unfortunately. But let's just do. Uh, Boz should know this. I mean, I'm sort of. I'm not stitching you up here, but it's top 300. But how many? How many Australians would you say combined, men and women? Top 300. 300. Top 300. Not an easy one. Obviously, top 100 uh, and stuff like that's easy. But I won't let you. I mean, you can go first if you want. But I go with uh, more than more than Italy. Go on, go on, Davido. I, I go with the eleven. Ten. Boz? Nine. Be confident, Boz. Yeah, nine. <laughs> be, be a bit more confident. <laughs> Twelve. Yeah, a bit more confident than that. Come on. No way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. <laughs> take into account, take into account the women's rankings is, is yeah. less strong or less, has less depth than the men's. So I'm taking 300 uh, of both. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Boz, Boz wins, he changed his answer, but um, it, it's 19. <laughs> 19. 19? Yeah, there's, there's 12. Bob, Boz, just for your, for your records, there's 12 yeah. women, seven men in the top 300. Unfortunately, I think the top ranked male is 160. Yeah. The, Italian, the Italian man is going to change it, right? What's that? The Italian man is Yuri. a bit higher than that. What's Yuri ranked? Yeah, He's like Yuri. 80? Yuri. Yeah, Yuri, yeah. I don't have that stat, but he is ranked higher. Um, Nicholas, you've won a quiz, mate. It's been a long time. I'm back in it. I'm back in it. We're having a Boys. running running series and I'm back in it. He's taken yep. you out. The only other person I've beaten so far was Rami. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good list, Rami, mate. In fairness, you're getting some good wins in. Rami, Rami, this is how much Rami's staying in touch with Squash. He didn't know that Daryl still played on the tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be fair, he didn't remember it. He didn't remember any of our matches either. But that's just standard, isn't it? <laughs> and he's but most. Anyway, <laughs> Go on. You surprised me with that. You surprised me with your first question. Women football World Cup. Come on, give me something. <laughs> I would have. I would have won it up. I thought men's men's football was too easy for you. Yeah. Well, just uh, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> that was a typical one. Don't mind about the questions. <laughs> no, I know. Guys, thank you both so much. It's been fun. Boys, up. yeah, you thanks both, very much for coming on. You're both ahead of the UK in terms of getting back on court. So send us some updates of your um, getting back to squash after lockdown. Oh, we will. How's that good. back and holds going? Still strong. Still, like <laughs> Still strong. Now, nah, boys, thanks, thanks boys. for your time. Thanks, thanks, thanks guys. See you. Good catch up, up, fellas. Thanks, good catch up. Vicky Buzz. Send love to Vicky. Yeah. Do, yeah, yeah. Cheers, mate. Cheers, guys. See you later. Ciao, ciao. Yes, I got the victory in back in the game in the quiz. <laughs> Not competitive yeah. or anything. No, you, you did well there, to be fair. Got one of them on the nose.
It's good effort that you know. Good, I like the I like the Italy Australia angle. Good one that. Yeah, that just good. Good chat. Those two are uh, chalk and cheese, as we said at the start, but you can see how they get on well. The yeah, cool moment with Davide. What a legend. Yeah, he's they're both both great guys, and uh, yeah, Davide is full of um, enthusiasm and. I say enthusiasm, no, he's not always so enthusiastic, but just his natural Italian persona comes out and um, he's always great to talk to. And then, um, yeah, but Boz is like, he's just exactly the same as I remember when he, when he played. Like, he doesn't like his just, age either, does he? No, not at all. He's just, just like a thoroughly nice guy. Um, and yeah, like you can see the see the little he enjoys Davide he enjoys listening to Davide he does stuff him quite well yeah yeah so no it's a good good episode that good um, who have you sorted out have you sorted out you've been on the uh, on the email on the been on the blower been, 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 get... been, been wheeling dealing on the emails um, I look like a dinosaur I went like that I, uh, I was, became a dinosaur for some reason I'm not sure what happened there uh, the T-Rex yeah T- Kempy it's not Kempy we've not got Kempy on um, hook for it. We've got uh, going to be good on this again. We've got Mohammed and Marwan. Nice. A bit of brotherly okay. love. Obviously, um, do a bit of coaching with Marwan now, trying to help him in his career, um, trying to steer him on the right path. If he ever listens to me, no, just kidding. Um, and Mohammed, I played him a lot, and yeah, just a little bit like Rami. You you said this, I think, that it was really interesting to have that insight into what he's thinking during those matches. And of course, Mohammed might be slightly different because he's still in his career, so he can't give too much away. But yeah, yeah. He, but he can still talk about some of those. He talks a lot about that era of players, doesn't he? Like uh, myself and Shabana and Rami and Goldie, etc. So really fascinated to uh, hear yeah. him about that. Be a good, be a good dynamic that one, I think. Well, All righty. Well, look forward to that. Tune Hopefully uh, everyone's still enjoying the episodes and yeah. uh, we'll crack on with the next one. Yeah. Stay safe, everyone. See you, mate. Stay yeah. alert.